Did you know plants can store nutrients differently? Plants store nutrients in their fruits and in their seeds as well as in their roots. But the nutrients stored in the roots are different from the nutrients stored in the seed. We've learned before that starch is a suitable storage in plants. So the roots tend to store starch. That's why you have starch in potatoes. Seeds, on the other hand, happen to store lipids. That's why you have plant oils extracted from soya bean seeds, sunflower seeds, palm oil seeds, and so on. But why the difference? Why can't seeds store starch? Find out in today's video of BioWorld. Today, we will be learning about the functions of the three different kinds of lipids, that is triglycerides, phospholipids and lecithin together, as well as steroids and cholesterol together. Let's begin. Let's begin with triglycerides. The functions of triglycerides are similar to the functions found in carbohydrates as well as water. For instance, triglyceride has a role in storage, energy source, as well as a precursor. You will find that carbohydrates also have these three functions. Moving on, we see triglycerides can function as solvents, insulators, water source, as well as buoyancy. Once again, you will notice similarities of these roles in the role of water. The only role that both carbohydrate and water do not show, but found in triglyceride, is as protection. Let me now go into each function individually. First, we discuss the role of triglycerides as storage material. Triglycerides are suitable for storage because they are insoluble, just like how starch and glycogen are suitable for storage. But the reasons for being insoluble is different. Starch and glycogen are insoluble because their hydroxyl groups carry out hydrogen bonding. However, triglycerides have no hydrogen bonds. Instead, they are insoluble because they are nonpolar, making them hydrophobic. Since triglycerides do not mix with water, they are biochemically not reactive and unable to diffuse out of the cell. Next, we see triglycerides in the form of fats. Because fats have saturated fatty acids, therefore, they can be made compact and remain solid at room temperature. So animal cells that store fats actually require less space to store the triglyceride. And finally, we see the advantage for cells to store triglycerides instead of carbohydrates is that the triglycerides can generate double the amount of energy compared to carbohydrates, which means cells that are storing fats or oils are going to be lighter than cells that are storing starch or glycogen. Let me show you an example. Let's say this seed stores 10 milligrams of starch to generate 10 kilojoules of energy. Now, if this seed chooses to store lipids instead, then it will only require 5 milligrams of lipid to store the same 10 kilojoules of energy. So now you can see the seeds will become smaller and lighter. My question to you is, what is the advantage of having smaller and lighter seeds? Write down in the comments below. 
We move on next to the role of triglyceride rice as an energy source. This is the structure of the triglyceride. You can see it is very rich in carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. To convert triglycerides from storage to energy source, hydrolysis must happen. When hydrolysis occurs, triglycerides become glycerol and fatty acids once again. Glycerol and fatty acids are respiratory substrates just like glucose. So, when they are broken down, they are able to generate ATP. However, the ATP is two times more than carbohydrate because triglycerides have many carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. Just as how monosaccharides were precursors for disaccharides and polysaccharides, triglycerides are also precursors to form new organic molecules. For example here, the triglyceride has combined with a carbohydrate. So now we have a new organic molecule called a glycolipid. Triglycerides can also function as a solvent. Now, it is not a universal solvent like water, but triglycerides are necessary to help dissolve lipid-soluble molecules like vitamins A, D, E, and K, as well as steroid hormones. We look next at triglycerides' role as an insulator. Water was a heat insulator because ice floats. But triglycerides are insulators because they are non-polar. Earlier we learned that if triglycerides are non-polar, they are biochemically inactive. But you see, triglycerides are also inactive in transmitting electrical impulse such as the impulses found in nerve cells. You see, nerve cells are covered by a layer called the myelin sheath, which is made up of triglycerides. So when nerve cells transmit electrical impulse, you can notice that the impulse do not jump from neuron to neuron because the myelin sheath is protecting the neurons. So you can see it is an electrical insulator. Triglycerides are also heat insulators because they do not transport heat. So when fats are stored in adipose tissues under our skin, our body heat does not escape to the environment. We can see this applied in animals living in cold climates. You see this is a seal. The baby seal known as the pup is protected by a thick layer of fur to keep it warm. But the adult, you see, has no fur. Instead, it has skin. Yet, it won't be cold because under the skin, it has a thick layer of adipose tissue, protecting it or insulating it from the cold outside. Next is the role of triglycerides as a water source. You know that the condensation to produce triglyceride will generate three molecules of water. So that is why when animals that live in dry areas like the camel are given enough food, the animals will store that food as fat in their hump so that they can generate water for survival. But as they continue to move into the desert and they do not receive enough food, what happens, you see, is the fats will be oxidized. And it turns out that when you oxidize fat, you can also generate water. So that is why, you see, this hump here is empty since the camel has already oxidized the fat in this hump. So this is how triglycerides can generate water 
for the organism. Next, the role of triglycerides in buoyancy. Triglyceride helps things float. The reason is because triglycerides are insoluble. They don't mix with water since they are hydrophobic. Added to that, if the triglycerides are made up of unsaturated fatty acids, then the triglyceride molecule will have a larger volume, making it less dense than water. So this explains the reason why in cases of drowning, we find people with less fat in their body drown more quickly compared to people with more fat. So you can see triglyceride is very important for buoyancy. And finally, we see the role of triglycerides in protection. Now triglyceride molecules, especially the fats, have high melting point, making them solid at room temperature. So they can form a thick layer around the organs of our body and provide physical protection. For example, here you can see the heart is covered by this white layer of fat. This actually provides protection to the beating heart. But over here, you can see the fat is excessive. The yellow fat here is excessive, leading to cardiovascular problems. Now that we know all the roles of triglyceride, let's move on to the role of phospholipids. Here you have my lecithin with the head, and these are phospholipids minus the head. However, in the discussion, I will use these phospholipids to represent both phospholipids and lecithin. Now we know these molecules are amphipathic, where the head is hydrophilic and the tails are hydrophobic. Now when these molecules are in an aqueous solution, the molecules will have to reassemble to adjust to their amphipathic nature. They do this in two ways. The first way is the molecules will arrange as a micelle, where you can see the hydrophilic heads are in contact with the aqueous solution, while the hydrophobic tails are inside away from the aqueous solution. Most of the lipid soluble molecules are transported in our blood in the form of a micelle. The second way is to arrange in the form of a bilayer, where you can see the hydrophilic heads are directed outward in contact with the solution, while the hydrophobic tails are directed inwards away from the solution. The phospholipids habit of forming a bilayer is very useful in the formation of the plasma membrane. Phospholipids and lecithins function as a boundary, keeping the molecules in the tissue fluid separate from the molecules in the cytoplasm. And you can notice also that the phospholipids are not static. They are always moving around, making the plasma membrane very fluid. Added to that, the presence of the phospholipid and lecithin make the plasma membrane semi-permeable, where you can see not all the molecules of the tissue fluid are entering into the cytoplasm. Only molecules that are either small or lipid soluble can diffuse across the plasma membrane. And finally, we find the fluidity by the Phospholipid and lecithin in the plasma membrane enable a process of transport known as cytosis, where the plasma membrane can actually bend inwards to move molecules of the tissue fluid into the cytoplasm by forming tiny vesicles. We will learn this in the future topics related to organelles. Last but not least, we look at
cholesterol as a representative of steroids. Cholesterols play an important role in the plasma membrane where they help to maintain the fluidity of the membrane. You see, if the phospholipids or lecithins are too close together, they make the plasma membrane too rigid. Once the plasma membrane is too rigid, the membrane is not hemipermeable anymore, nor is it able to carry out cytosis. So to prevent the membrane from becoming too rigid, cholesterol can help to push the phospholipids or lecithins further apart. This way, the fluidity is maintained and the membrane is prevented from becoming too rigid. Now the opposite can happen where the phospholipids or lecithins can move too far apart. If they are too far away, then the membrane becomes too fluid. And this is also not good because now the membrane is porous. That means the molecules of the tissue fluid can freely enter into the cytoplasm. So what cholesterol will do now is sort of pull these molecules closer together. This way, the membrane is maintained and prevented from becoming too fluid. Cholesterol can also be a precursor, just like how triglycerides were precursors of glycolipids. Cholesterol will use its four carbon ring to form other steroids such as progesterone and testosterone. Come to the end of our discussion on lipids. I feel lipids deserve to be number one. I hope you feel the same way too. Until I see you next time, bye-bye from BioWorld.